Okay, we had uh, talked about critters that you might have around your house, especially if you're living in uh, some of the suburbs or if you're in a more rural area. And uh, something, I had a critter that was actually a hole that was in the backyard, and I was wondering what the heck it was because we hadn't seen anything around. So this is something that you might want to consider. I went and I got this from Amazon. I'm going to put the link in to where to get it. It's under 40 bucks. This is a game camera. So it is camera. This is photography. And um, this, despite, now the link that I take you to is going to say it's 1080p. It is not. It's 720p. But that's okay for what uh, you're going to get out of here or what you're going to get out of it. It takes four AA batteries, which do not come with it, so make sure you get batteries. And it just takes a regular SD card. I guess you can get those AnyLoop rechargeables. Yeah, that's what I use, the AnyLoops. Although it says don't use nickel metal hydride for some reason. I don't know why, but they work fine. And um, an SD card up to 32 gigabyte also does not come with it. So make sure that you have an SD card, 32 gigabyte or under. This also will take 12 megapixel stills. It's got, as you can see on the front here, and this is completely sealed and weatherproof. Um, it has all these little LED lights so that uh, LED infrared lights so at night it'll light up of course the pictures are going to be in black and white i've got a video here i want to share with you because we found our critter that was <laughs> digging in the base of the house yes it's this armadillo that was uh, down in there so this is i guess a motion detector up in the front so any motion comes up you can set this as far as whether you want video you want stills and if stills, what do you want? One megabyte to up to 12 mega, uh, I'm sorry, megapixels, not megabyte, megapixels. And um, it comes with a strap as well as a base and uh, a little tripod mount so you can mount it to a wall or you can use the strap to mount it to a tree. And uh, just leave it out there, turn it on. And see but when you say the get. base, you're not talking about this piece. No. Now, I wanted to mention that real quick because I'm using the Platypod here, the little Platypod Mini, which is ideal for this because uh, I put this down on the ground. And then there was another hole out there that I was kind of curious. I think it was another hole the armadillo had abandoned, and I strapped it to a, a bird feeder. I'm sorry, a bird bath that was there, and I was able to hmm. strap that into the Platypod aim it and got nothing that night so something to keep in mind that at least you would be able to see what critters are around your house then maybe then you can take out your real camera and get a uh, right a, a this is image. kind of a way of in being able to investigate yes so I'll, i'm going to put both links for the, the the platypod should you want to get that and the um this particular trail camera Okay. So, any questions on that, Fred? Anything I might have... Well, yeah, I have out? lots. Let me take it home with me, and I'll try it for a month or so, and then that should answer right. all my questions. Okay. All right. And, uh, oh, here, yeah. Here, here's the base that comes with the uh, the camera. So, it's got a little base, and this just mounts into it. It's got a quarter 20 on the back there. So, anyway, that's something that I uh, want you to keep in mind. Just another you know, something yeah, handy tool. Just another aspect kind of, of photography that you may not have considered. And even, Mind blown. At, <laughs> even at 12 megapixels, you may get some pretty good stuff. You yeah. might. Well, folks, for close-up and macro work, one of the things you always have to worry about is what's behind what you're trying to capture. The background can mean everything. There have been countless times where I've seen what would be beautiful photographs of plants and other small items, you know, insects, whatever, but what was behind them, to me, detracted. I am going personally for that nice bokeh that has almost a pastel effect. It really allows the eye to be drawn to the subject, to what's your focal point, to what you're trying to actually capture and then surround with something beautiful. In the case of this, beautiful bloom on this lily, but you've got this wall here, you've got house and windows behind. 
you don't really want to say, oh, this was taken in somebody's yard. No, you want them to focus on, here's the plant. Jim's going to give me a hand here real quick. He's going to be my voice actuated background holder. Yes, what we've got, got here, job here is, <laughs> well, tell us what this is, Jim. Oh, this is, uh, actually, I took a, an image, brought it into Photoshop, and just put it out of focus and put it out. This is matte paper. I think it's 11 by 16. And uh, it makes a nice, it uh, looks like a nice bouquet or out of a focus background. As you can see, you can put it back in here. Right. One thing he's trying to avoid is too much the, the light, light and shadow. Yeah, light coming on. But now I can get a much better background behind it when I focus on. And if I'm you don't seeing, have a, a voice activated uh, <laughs> background holder, maybe a clamp, which right. is another device that will allow you to clip it on, or an old tripod or something that you can put back there. Even taking an old wire coat hanger, bending it in such a way where you can put it on a mm -hmm. tripod with a clothespin just to hold it in place. A windy day is not a great day for it, and we've had gustiness here. But now I've got a background that's going to blend and look a lot better behind it. I'm not going to see this. I'm not going to see the other things that are going to detract from the picture. And there you have it. It's a real and you may want quick to do and easy several way. of these mm -hmm. uh, with different colors on there. This one happens to be uh, like a green, but you could also do them with uh, you know brown or uh, blue. You could go into a color. rose garden and take pictures of that, you could, you could and just not so much for focal but for background. You... There you go. You got white side. So there's a lot of things you can do to help yourself, but this is one of them. All right, so I have a plant here that's putting out some flowers, some wadilia, putting out some nice yellow flowers, but I'm, again, I'm going to have to pay attention to my background. This time I don't have my voice activated background holder and I don't have that with me. So what I'm going to do is try to pick and choose the right one. This one's beautiful in there. Problem is I've got all these leaves in front and that's going to be a tough one, especially if it's a little gusty. This one looks like a very good candidate. I have nothing but other plant material around it. Actually, I've got some different colorations, light green, dark green. I can get in there, focus in, take my capture, and I've got a nice plant. Nice flower and something to uh, draw the eye to that plant itself and not detract from the background. Because if you look up higher, you see fence, housing, other things that really aren't going to do anything. Remember, we're not worried if this is a backyard, the middle of the forest, whatever. We want the focus to be on the beauty here not any di distracting from anything around. Okay, well this tip may not exactly blow your mind, but here's a great way to get some pictures, good images of backyard birds. Uh, behind me I have a homemade bird feeder stand and um, go over this real quick how I put this together. You can buy a commercial one if you want. But these are three foot sections of PVC that uh, basically I got at Home Depot. You can get them probably at your local uh, hardware dealer. And sleeves. I also have a T-bar up at the top up here and a smaller piece of PVC from which I'm hanging my uh, feeders and that of course is to attract the birds. Now Squirrels are also going to be attracted to this, and it took me a while to figure this out to outsmart those little buggers. But I've got a piece of aluminum. Again, you pick this up at your hardware store. They're very inexpensive. I think it was like a buck or so. Cut a hole in it and slip it over the PVC. I've drilled a hole in the PVC because you need it to be high enough or the squirrels will just leap over it. Also make sure that it's not close to anything where the squirrels can jump to the, uh, the feeder. All right, well, I know you're not going to want PVC. You don't want anything from the hand to man end. So what I have done here now is I've taken and clamped on a piece of a branch that uh, hopefully looks a lot more natural than the PVC does. And uh, so what you were hoping that the birds are going to come and perch on here. As an incentive, you might take a little, and I have over here, this is a suet. A little sticky suet. Put some seeds up in here. Honey, anything that you can put the seeds up there. Maybe a little piece of fruit just out of frame to uh, encourage the birds to land up in here rather than go straight for the seed. Uh, if you have a little cap or something that you can put some seed in, that would work as well. In order to get your PVC in the ground, what I do is I 
before I hook this up, I stick a garden hose down in here and on high pressure and I push this PVC here down in the ground and put the sleeve on and build it up from there. Okay, and now here is the, uh, the real secret here. What you want to do is set up a camera and I've got this set on a remote control. This is a radio remote and I prefer these over the Bluetooth. I mean, there's many of these available. But the Bluetooth, generally, you have to be fairly close to the camera in order to for the Bluetooth to connect. This radio uh, version, I can be up to 100 yards away, 300 feet, and uh, that lets me control the camera. So I can sit in the porch here and keep an eye out and then trigger the uh, camera as soon as the bird lands on the porch. Now, I've got this framed, so it's just seeing the branch. Now, one other thing you want to keep in mind is the sun. Birds tend to come out early in the morning and later in the afternoon to feed. So in the morning, you're going to have your camera positioned differently than you would in the afternoon because you want that light coming right into the bird. You don't want it to come in the side or backlit. You want it coming right into the bird itself. And uh, so you're going to have to have different positions depending upon the time of day. So that's it. Hope you uh, enjoy this tip. Well, one of the things too that we talk about is lighting when we're doing close up or macro, especially photography. A lot of times you may be doing that in an area that's fairly shady like this one is. So there's a couple ways to go. Yes, you can go with panel lights. One of the things that a lot of people talk about is, hey, do I need a ring flash? Well, it's an expensive piece of equipment. You're gonna pay a little bit for a good one. Uh, but if you do decide to use one and there's nothing wrong with that, you're gonna need to practice with it. One of the things I will say as my tip, don't put it on TTL and don't put it out to full. Go to manual, put it down to a much lower 1 16th, 1 24th, something where it's not putting out a lot of light just enough to fill and you'll have to practice with it. The other beauty thing about a light of this type is that you can set just one side to go off so then you're just filling from one side which would be more natural like light would. It wouldn't necessarily be a full circle going around and lighting it up perfectly. Remember you're not doing CSI where you're trying to light up a, somebody in a chalk line. No, you're just trying to fill. So I do like these but as time has gone on, I've become a big fan of panel lights. And the reason I'm showing this one, this is one that you can still get. Uh, it's inexpensive. You can order it online. It's not a big investment. The one thing you'll have to buy is the battery because it doesn't ship with one. You can use either AA cells or you can use a battery. It's basically the Panasonic. I think it's the NP75, uh, something like that. We can pos possibly put that in the show notes. And then of course, I like to use this panel light because it actually is not just a set of, of the uh, LEDs, but it has a temperature control where I can go white or red, which is good. It balances out that spectrum outside where I can get what I'm looking for, which is a more natural sunlight. Now, another thing you can do, you didn't have any lights with you, but you need to do something. And Jim's actually using one now, but I'm gonna show you a little different version. Fits in your pocket, and basically all you have to do is open this thing up and you now have an instant reflector. You've got a white one, but you've also got this one which will uh, allow that light to be reflected up and will help light up a plant without having any lights with you. And this one, like I said, fits in your shirt pocket. Okay, so it's beautiful. It's not that expensive an investment. There's a, a lot of companies carrying these now so you can go online and, and the biggest thing probably will be choosing the right one. Uh, because there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I found that this one works well for me. This is an Interfit, but there's a, there's a bunch of brands out there. So there's lighting for your close-up and macro work.